and welcome back to the Drive School, episode 2 on the permanent magnet motors. We are going to look further into efficiency on a permanent magnet motor. So, you think that efficiency on a permanent magnet motor is 98%? Well, it can be if you do it optimal in a closed loop motor control. However, you should be aware that if you run this permanent magnet motor in an open loop, the efficiency can drop quite dramatically down to maybe 60% at low power outtakes. How is this? When you are designing a ship, you put energy into the system and all the efficiency factors, the way to the propeller, will determine how energy efficient your vessel will be. You will lose some energy on the way, 4% you lose on the drives with these filters and stuff, and you should, on the permanent magnet motor, lose only some 2%. But, oops, actually it's possible to lose 40% if you don't do it right. The ship propeller itself, ideally it should be 80% efficiency, and, whoops, you can get down to 40% if you do it wrong. Wrong pitch, wrong speed, wrong diameter compared to the ship hull. So here also is a big factor for the efficiency of the ship. But look at the permanent magnet motor. Our ability to transform electrical power into mechanical power. Basically that is voltage multiplied with current will give us speed multiplied with torque to the propeller. If you look at the efficiency of a permanent magnet motor, the motor vendor will have some advertised efficiency of maybe 98%, but that is at the nominal power outtake and it requires a closed loop motor control. In this way, you keep the reactive current as low as possible to keep the polar angle and the losses from the current and the iron losses are minimal. If you compare this to open loop motor control, you will find that the efficiency of the same motor drops quite dramatically because, as we saw in the last episode, you need to over magnetize this motor to keep the polar angle. To prevent it from stalling, you are pushing a lot of reactive current just to keep a strong torque and pulling the magnets synchronous to the stator field. At the nominal power takeout, you can optimize this, you can get some better efficiency. But at lower power outtakes and speeds, you will probably drop the efficiency very, very dramatically. You can go down to 60%. So when the ship is at slow maneuvering and the, the propeller is uh, just turning very slowly, the efficiency, the amount of electric energy you put into the permanent magnet motor, maybe only 60% get to the propeller. What about the old-fashioned induction motor in use for ship propulsion compared to the more fancy permanent magnet motor? In ship design, you need then to adapt the motor RPM to the optimal propeller speed. Induction motor comes in four pole and six pole in practical uh, versions. And that is an RPM which is too high for the propeller. It's typical 900 RPM. So you will need a gearbox which have a loss of 1%, 2% or something. Compared to the permanent magnet motor, which can have a pole number where the RPM is adapted to the optimal ship propeller speed. Then you don't have the losses of the gearbox. If you compare the losses and efficiency in the motors itself, the PM motor can theoretically have an efficiency of 98%, whereas the induction motor maybe is at about 97%. But when we look at the curves, this is at the motor nominal performance. You go to the uh, nominal power output and nominal RPM. When you reduce the power outtake and the RPM, the difference becomes more pronounced. 
because the induction motor need to be magnetized all the time. The rotor need this magnetizing current of about 30% of nominal all the time and this creates copper losses and uh, uh, iron losses which the permanent magnet motor does not have. So the efficiency at lower power takes are quite much better on the permanent magnet motor. Another quite big difference is the open loop efficiency. We will see that the permanent magnet motor have a really bad efficiency in open loop because you need to over magnetize it to keep the polar angle. The induction motor with its slip does not need to be over magnetized. This 30% uh, uh, fixed magnetizing current is all it takes and this is usually quite better than the really hard uh, over magnetizing needed for the permanent magnet motor. So the efficiency for an induction motor in open loop can be quite better than the open loop for a permanent magnet motor. To explain the difference in efficiency between the permanent magnet motor and the induction motor, we have to look into how the rotor actually works. In the permanent magnet motor, we already have a magnetized rotor. In the induction motor, we have a piece of iron with a winding around it that is magnetized by the stator field and the slip. The slip makes a frequency between the stator and the rotor, so it almost work like a transformer. However, you will have losses here in the rotor. You will have iron losses and copper losses, which you don't have here on the permanent magnet motor. With a permanent magnet motor, we learn that the torque needed, the reactive current, doesn't need to be uh, big. It can be quite low and you can adapt it with a computerized closed loop control to be just a minimum. And the active current will be the dominant part of the motor current at low power outtakes. When you have a higher active power outtake, you could have a situation where you don't need much torque and you can have a low reactive. So still at lower power outtakes, you will have a total current which is optimized and you will have the efficiency in the 98% region. When you compare it to the induction motor, you will have a lower efficiency. You will see that the total current for the same active power usually is bigger because you have the magnetizing current going on at all times, even at lower power outtakes. Here we will see that at idling, then you still have the 30% of motor nominal current going on. And this is just to magnetize the motor rotor. This losses, the iron losses and the copper losses, will be the difference in efficiency between these two motors. How to select the correct type of motor for your ship design? Let's say the ship designer have uh, come up with some numbers for the kilowatts and the RPM for the propeller, what is optimal for this uh, ship design. And this is a very energy efficient modern vessel with diesel generators and battery hybrid. So let's take a look at the motors. They also have requirement for space. So there is limited space for this uh, motor. So you need to be compact. When we look at the permanent magnet motor, we see that the need for the cooling is basically in the stator. Uh, it will be in the motor casing in the outside perimeter. Whereas the induction motor, we need also to cool the rotor. We learn that we have losses in the rotor which need to take this energy out of the motor. Cooling of the permanent magnet motor can be done quite compact with a water cooling jacket straight on the casing of the motor. We only need to cool the stator. Whereas the induction motor need also to cool its rotor and we cannot connect the water cooling to the rotating part so we need cold air flushing through the center of the motor. And we then need our air cooling system with a circulation fan, heat exchanger, and we use the same system also for cooling down the stator. Problem is that volume for this installation is quite bigger when you compare to the compact permanent magnet motor. Remember that the ship designer wanted 400 RPM to the propeller, so this induction motor of 900 RPM will need a gearbox 
to adapt to the propeller. To compare motors apples to apple, our permanent magnet motor is also 900 RPM and will need the same gearbox. So the question then is, why don't make the permanent magnet motor with more poles and then we adapt the RPM to 400 RPM and higher torque without the gearbox? In the marine environment, where there is a requirement for class certified permanent magnet motors, if you want to get rid of the gearbox by selecting a permanent magnet motor with higher torque, lower RPM, often the physical shape and size of the motor and also the mass increase quite a lot. You see it quite clearly here on these two small motors. This pancake permanent magnet motor 24 pole have a very high torque and low RPM. However, the kilowatt output of this is the same as this regular induction motor. Of course, this motor runs 10 times higher RPM and 10 times lower torque. But it is um, quite obvious that the gearbox should always be considered even with permanent magnet motors. These direct driven pancake motors might not always be the most beneficial for the ship design. <laughs> what about extreme power density? What does it take to make a very, very high power density motor? In the marine environment, we find that the class certified motors have a reasonable high power density, but it's not as extreme as you see in other applications as automotive and aircrafts and model airplanes and so on. And to keep the power density to the extreme, there are two things, cooling and motor control. The motor control need to be in such a way that the losses in the motor are kept to its minimum. This motor have a whopping 9 kilowatt or 12 horsepower output. And it's a, a motor designed for hang gliders. So some crazy people, they fly high above the ground with this small thing. But to push this much power, the cooling is one thing. The whole bell, the rotating bell, work as a centrifugal pump for air and then cooling down the state of winding, which will carry some whopping 200 amperes at 50 volts during a takeoff situation. To keep the heat losses as low as possible, we need to get it down to 2%. It's all about closed loop motor control. And this specific motor have a trapeze waveform which makes it a little bit easier for the sensorless closed loop to have the needed precision to keep the losses as low as possible. We always run it most optimal closed loop. So here we see the importance of having a very, very precise motor control. Actually, it's a computer that makes it possible to run this extreme power from this small motor. And this brings us back to the marine environment. The importance of running the motors in closed loop to have a precision motor control. In this environment, we put encoders, physical encoders on the motors. And we need to take a look at this encoder because it's a quite important part of the closed loop control. To get the highest efficiency out of the permanent magnet motor, we saw the importance of running with the optimal pole angle and the optimal reactive current at all times. And this has to be done in a closed loop motor control. And the drive need to know the pole angle at all times to set the stator correctly at all times. In the marine environment, we usually use a hardware encoder to see the position of the rotor. The three types that we see most in this environment and preferred one are these one, the resolver, the incremental and the absolute SSI encoder. The resolver is analog old style 10 kilohertz, 10 volt peak to peak sinus cosinus signal back, which is only two volts. The pros with it is that it's low cost, it's pretty small to fit inside a motor and it's standard for the permanent magnet motor industry. However, the cons with it is pretty serious and that is noise. With long cable lengths in the marine environment, we have a lot of trouble with noise on that signal, the precision of the signal. 
Then you have the incremental encoder. This is the old classical incremental encoder used for induction motors uh, all years. Can also be used for permanent magnet motors, A, B, and Z poles based on 24 volts, 1024 poles per round is okay. The pros with it is that it's pretty robust encoder. Uh, you can pull long cables, it's EMC tolerant, and uh, for propulsion plant, this is the preferred type of encoder. The cons with it is that the first startup, we need to pass the set pulse in IF control mode to know the, the polar angle of the motor. For a propulsion plant, this doesn't mean much, but for a winch, it could mean something because you cannot start up then at uh, maximum torque zero speed after the control system have been powered down. Then you have the absolute SSI encoder with an uh, analog resolver 1 volt peak to peak. This is actually an encoder signal which is divided into a data serial signal for the polar angle at startup, and then an um, analog resolver which is the real time uh, uh, signal used for the closed loop speed control. The pros with it is the precision. So in zero speed high torque application like winches and when you have load shear, you should uh, uh, work with several permanent magnet motors on the same mechanical uh, process, then this have some benefits. The cons with it is robustness. It's a sophisticated computer inside, so if it's in some vibrating and uh, uh, difficult environment uh, issues, then uh, the robustness might be an issue. Cable lengths, it's a Serial data signal, so how long can you pull it? 30 meters maybe. The cost is a little bit more costly encoder compared to the incremental encoder. So, thank you. This was all for this episode, and if you want to learn more about uh, Danfoss Editron motor, then roll over to the next episode.